A group of individuals in Koroa share a picture of water, yet it is insufficient for everyone in a world where the majority of the earth is covered by water. A child named Tustin receives his portion from a man named Timor and uses the sunstone to learn how to tell the time. A guy named Mason and his crew examine the offerings while the community descends into anarchy. The lack of water enrages Mason, who threatens to either take the village or give them to Ian Fan, his boss. Willow and the others are rescued from Mason's village by Timor and his troops. They watch as Mason, who chooses to abandon his submarine to save the others, holds Willow and the others as prisoners. But Mason's crew spots him and forces him back into the submarine. Sharks attack them, but they make it to the top in time to avoid being killed. In order to generate fresh water, Willow and the other inmates must perform arduous work running turbines. He hears Warlord Ian and Mason talking about their new fresh water making machine, which will use the inmates as a resource and eliminate the need for people to turn turbines. When Tamor and Shah return to their town in this story, their elder tells them to give up. Tamor chooses to steal valuables from his house because he won't give up. They employ Edger, an electrical engineer, and Toby, a specialist in explosives, locate a free diver named Nemu, and make plans to steal a boat. The guys who stole Willow, however, trick them. If he doesn't return the ship, Timor summons his fortress mason and threatens to murder his entire community. Enraged by the circumstances, they send Ian a surprise bomb, which detonates. Ian promises Timor and his people that he will use sharks to murder them underwater in a message. By having Mason manipulate the sharks to kill a human, he sets an example. The sharks do not attack Willow and the other inmates once they are cast into the ocean. Willow refuses to answer Ian's question about how she manages the sharks without a gadget. Mason and his soldiers hold the Koroa people hostage when he threatens her once more. To find out how Willow manipulates the sharks, Ian puts sensory sensors on her head. Then he releases several sharks and tosses one of the detainees into the sea. Willow has no choice but to start requesting assistance from the villagers. In this story, Timor and his pals are trying to flee and attack Ian and his troops. To divert Timor and Edder, they unleash sharks on them. A catapult tries to strike Timor, but he avoids it and gets away. Timor and Nu then jump into the sea to access the facility underwater after the group maneuvers the boat to a secure spot. They are pursued by the sharks, though, and one of them attacks them with bombs. Aldrin guns down a big shark that Edder sees coming toward the boat with bombs. When the boat and shark collide, the boat explodes. Willow uses her abilities to manipulate the sharks because she believes her pals are in danger. Shah and Aldrin swim to Ian's fortress after she entices the sharks away from them. Ian gives his soldiers the command to capture her and deliver her to him. Ian electrocutes Willow after she uses her abilities to halt the sharks. Ian and his guys dump her into the ocean after she faints. Mason shows up and assaults Timor, who gets there in time to save her. When he is overwhelmed, Willow awakens and saves Mason's life by forcing him to be eaten by a shark. After saving Shah and Aldrin, they flee, but Ian stops them. After receiving training on how to manage her influence, Willow is named the new Queen of the Sea.